more pop-up headlights. All right, just kidding. This is my buddy John's car that's absolutely incredible. Thanks, John, for letting us use your shop because this lives handy. the hood open and everything. <laughs> Are you just gonna wing it? On today's episode of Watch Jericho, we try to replace that old rubber flywheel damper on the 944 with a static clutch setup. What is going on guys? I am Watch J Ergo and we are here with the $500 1987 Porsche 944. And as you saw in yesterday's video, we basically fixed this thing with just injector rings and some cleaning. So we poured a little 44K in the injectors, let it sit, ran them through a cleaner. It runs, it started right up on the first try today. So the engine's doing well, sounds great. <clears throat> Only problem is lots of rattle coming out of that flywheel <laughs> damper, it's nasty. So the car came with, Grab these out of here. This box right here. Extra pieces. Extra pieces, and they're just the pieces we need. So this is a non-spring clutch right here, a rubber isolated dampened clutch, which should be perfect. And so I think that's what's wrong with our current setup, all it, the rubber in there. Yes, but the current one doesn't have any of this. It's just right. It must just have rubber. Else yeah, place. yeah. And, uh, and then this will just sit in there like a clutch and we'll tighten it down. And it will not have a clutch, but it will have a clutch disc. So there's the pressure plate, flywheel, all kinds of sauce right there. Good luck getting your fingers out of that. <laughs> anyway, that's how she goes together. Should be pretty simple. Uh, let's try to take this thing apart. Luckily today, got a button to push. I'll do it. Okay. Our mission depends on you doing it. Man, I have always wanted one of these cars. And I've got a good story about that. I'll tell you as soon as this thing's up in the air. If you can see in there, that is where we expect that rubber dampened flywheel to be, right there. The 944 is of course the, uh, a, a Corvette copy, because I'm a Corvette guy. <laughs> and uh, transaxle in the back, torque tube to the front, engine right there. And this is kind of cool. The starter's hanging all the way on the bottom, almost underneath the car. So. Hopefully we can get that all hooked back up with all that corrosion and everything from our riding down there. The bottom of this car looks wonderful. There's no rust. There's no serious leaks. This is pretty crazy to see. I told you guys I was gonna tell you this story. Here it is. When I was in high school, maybe my junior year of high school, I had a deal worked out on one of these, a 924S, which is probably the ideal one, I think. I know that 944 is, is the big brother to the 924, but I wanted this 924S very badly. The guy came over, showed it to us. We were like, I'll take it. And my dad didn't really want to own a Porsche, have one in the family, but I wanted it really badly. So it was my money that was coming out from uh, another car that insurance had bought from me basically. And he was like, I'll write the check. So we got a check, headed over to the guy's house. And while we were pulling up, he traded it to a guy for a Jeep. So I never got to own my dream 80s Porsche. And uh, now we have it. So now let's get to work on it. Josh is trying to put it in neutral so he can bang it back and forth and, and hear uh, that rattle. The underbody of this car looks incredible. There's no rust. No rust anywhere. Look at this, all the way along. It is a super clean car. We are here at the Pilot Bearing headquarters. This is the uh, bearing warehouse here in town. They have everything. So we're gonna run inside and get the Porsche bearing that we need right now. New project, new gloves. We've started opening these gloves like for every single car. So, go time. We're gonna get some gloves on and start pulling off the starter and this inspection plate, and then uh, we'll show you guys around.
Okay, as you can see, the exhaust is already off and the torque tube is right there. There's where it runs into the transmission. Here's where it runs up the body. So we gotta pull that. I'll pull those clamps. Pull this, the shield. Starter is about ready to come off. Exhaust came right off because they apparently tried to do this before and then gave up. Uh, and the O2 sensor was all butt crimped together and they ripped apart. So I guess we will be soldering and heat shrinking that. Lots of progress so far. Like another hour and this thing will be out. Yep. Now that we have the transaxle out of the way, you can see the problem with this thing. There should be zero play in this, and there's that much play in this. And earlier, you could hear it hitting up there. You can hear it up there. So that's what we're fixing. So the transaxle's out, all the rear suspension is down. We use the trans jack to lift that up and pull the bolts out of the shocks and everything like that. It's down as far as it will come down. We've been prying, trying to bring it down slowly, keep bringing it down, and it's just kind of sitting right there. It's not too far down, but hopefully it can clear. I think it'll clear. Our problem now is this will not come apart. And I don't know anything else to do. We've got, of course, the bolt is out of there that holds the uh, splines in place. It's got a clamp on the splines. So we've got that out and we've tried turning back and forth and pulling it back pretty hard, just giving it a couple of quick jerks. And this thing will not separate. Not sure what's going on. So we sprayed it down with some CRC knocker loose. Hopefully that soaks into those splines. So that might break loose any rust. And then, I mean, if it just comes back a little bit more, we can slide this thing out. So we're really close. One thing that's terrible is you have to turn this 180 degrees to get it clear. Uh, it looks like we might actually be able to clear it as is, but we're just working through those problems. So that is where we are right now. The problem is I'm stuck until I can look at the manual because I wanna verify there's nothing else there that's retaining the shaft at the front of the torque tube. So not quite sure what that would be. I'm, I think that we just need to pull a little bit harder, but that's probably it for tonight until I can go look at the book. Lots of progress though, and I went and cleaned the transmission up a little bit. Tried to get a little bit of the dirt off. This thing had who knows how many pounds of dirt. It was just covered and covered in dirt. They kept coming off, and there's still more on there. I couldn't get all of it, obviously. But it's better, and uh, it won't be so nasty when we go to put it back in. There won't be as much dirt falling in our eyes, basically. That's what we're going for and uh, I'm wiping things down as I go to try to get all the dirt out of there. That is it for the 1987 Porsche 944 for tonight. Oh, also the CVs were awesome. They were all triple square. So we grabbed the Audi tools on the way and uh, they came right apart and they're like the same part as the Audi part. Pretty cool, very easy. Anyway, don't forget to head on over to shopwatchchairgo.com where you can get cool shirts like this. And thank you guys once again so much for watching. Please like, share, subscribe, do whatever you wanna do and I will talk to you next time look at this there's nothing holding the rear in the car and it won't come down no matter what we do it's probably because it's got all this weight like that we might have to like take a two by four in the trans jack and unload the front of it so we can get it to come down i mean it is fighting it's fighting the good fight that thing is tight in there so uh i don't think it's gonna go anywhere tonight i think i can leave it on these stands it'll be okay i did get the suspension to stop fighting me it's all the way out now so that gives us a lot of room to try to pull that torque tube down Still won't budge, so I soaked it with more penetrating lubricant. Hopefully uh, that'll work out tomorrow. That's what I like to come home to, car parts.